Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This video is part of the Angular Fundamental series. In this video, we build upon our Angular demo application by introducing the concept of a HTML template, also known as a partial. We will demonstrate how to use a HTML partial with the ng-include directive. We will also touch on the use of Angular expressions and filters. Let's get started. I have opened the Angular demo application in my editor. I'm going to navigate to the source main app directory and open the index.html file. Next, I'm going to create a new file named header.html in the source main app partials directory. I'm going to cut the HTML markup located within the header tag and paste it into the header HTML file in the partials directory. This file represents my header HTML template. Next, I'm going to add the ng-include directive as an attribute on the header tag in the index HTML page. The value of the attribute is the relative path to the HTML template. Now, let's do the same steps to move the footer from the index page to a HTML template in the partials directory. Create a template file named footer.html in the partials directory. Paste the contents of the footer element from the index page into the template and add the ng-include directive to the footer element on the index page. Let's run the application to test these changes. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type gulp space run to start a local web server on port 9000. Now open a new browser tab. Go to localhost colon 9000 slash index.html. Notice the header and footer are displayed on the page just as they had been previously. However, now the HTML content has been isolated into a dedicated HTML template. As your application grows, it is important to minimize the content in the index page. The index page should only provide the top-level page structure. In our case, that top-level structure is the header, footer, and main content section. In the long run, this will improve the maintainability of the application. So far, we've cleaned up the index page by relocating static content to partials. Let's create controllers for the header and footer and make them dynamic. Open the controllers coffee source file and create a new controller named header controller. Next, let's create a similar controller for the footer.
Now that we have the controllers, we need to bind them to our HTML. Go back to the index page and use the ng controller directive attribute to bind these controllers to the header and footer tags respectively. When we created the new controllers, we defined new scope attributes. The page heading text is an attribute in the scope of the header controller, and the current timestamp is an attribute in the scope of the footer controller. Let's update the header and footer templates, or partials, to use those scope attributes. Open the header template. Let's up remove the static text in the H1 tag replacing it with an angular expression containing the page heading variable. An expression is a code snippet similar to JavaScript which is wrapped in double curly braces. The expression simply searches the scope for an attribute named page heading. Next, open the footer template. Update the template wrapping the current text in a paragraph tag and create a second paragraph tag below the first. Within the second paragraph, include an angular expression containing the current date-time variable. Let's run the application once more to test the new controllers. If we look at the terminal window, we left the gulp run task executing while we changed the application. Notice that gulp monitors the file system for source code changes and automatically deploys them to the distribution directory. Furthermore, a Gulp plugin informs our browser to refresh the page. Notice the header and footer displayed on the page just as they had previously. However, now the heading and footer obtain some of their content from their respective controllers. Unfortunately, the current date and time are not quite what we had hoped. The system is printing the raw timestamp rather than a nicely formatted value. Let's update the footer template to use an Angular filter. Angular filters process expression values often to format them for display on the page. The date filter is a flexible date formatter. We add the pipe character to the expression followed by the filter name. This date filter accepts the name of a predefined date format named short. Let's run the application once more to see the date filter in action. Look at the timestamp in the footer now. The date filter has transformed the timestamp into a concise, readable format. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the Lean Stacks YouTube channel and follow the Lean Stacks Google Plus page to receive updates as new videos are published. As always, you can find more information on leanstacks.com.